Hey guys, welcome to our new channel, Blender Academy. Everyone out there will tell you Blender is a super hard program to learn. Well, we're here to change that. I'm Alex, and over the past decade, I've taught thousands of students and professionals the fundamentals of 3D modeling. Our SketchUp School YouTube channel alone has over 8 million views. And now, we're bringing our proven teaching methods to Blender. In this video, I'll share five quick tips that you can use to learn Blender faster and more effectively and also talk a little bit about what to expect from our new channel and upcoming videos. Speaking of which, since we're a brand new channel, do us a huge favor and subscribe so you don't miss our latest videos. And please reach out to us in the comments or send us a message about the kind of content you want us to cover and the things you're struggling with most in Blender. On that note, what can you do to learn Blender faster and more effectively and maybe even have a little fun while doing it? Let's jump into our five quick tips with number one, start by creating a map. You probably had a goal in mind when you set out to learn Blender. Maybe it was to complete a particular project. Maybe it was something broader, like wanting to become a professional 3D animator. Either way, chances are there's not a perfectly tailored YouTube tutorial out there that outlines exactly how to get to your particular goal from start to finish. So how do you navigate the ocean of tutorials out there without wasting a ton of time or getting completely lost? Just like in the real world, it's best to have a map. But don't just take my word for it. Scott Young, author of Ultra Learning, a book about learning new skills unconventionally fast, says that outlining key concepts and resources to cover in order to reach your goal, or as he calls it, drawing a map, significantly reduces wasted time during the learning process. And it leverages how our brains work to store new information by creating a framework to more easily grasp new concepts as they arise. When you have a map, it helps you stay focused on only the skills you need to learn to reach your goal and avoid unnecessary tutorials or pieces of tutorials that won't help you achieve that goal. Of course, being new to Blender, at this point, you may feel like you couldn't possibly know what the steps are you even need to take. And that's okay. In Ultra Learning, Young provides a guide for writing down why you're learning and how to identify what concepts, facts, and procedures to focus on before you know everything about the new skill you're trying to learn. I definitely recommend you check out his book. Or if you don't have time, send me a message and I'd be happy to help you create a customized map for your particular situation. All right, you've got your map in hand. What's the next tip? Number two, create learning habits. Like most skills worth learning, Blender can't be learned in one mega study session. But as we all know, creating a new study habit and getting in regular practice can be difficult. So here's a tip from the director of the Behavior Design Lab at Stanford University, BJ Fogg. He calls it creating tiny habits, which essentially means picking a tiny first action for your new habit, then doing that new tiny habit immediately after something you already do every day, then celebrating your accomplishment of completing that tiny habit. This could look something like, I sit down at my desk every morning, which triggers my new tiny habit to press play on my next Blender tutorial. That's it. The habit is tiny and I've succeeded. To celebrate, I put on a party hat and eat a piece of cake. <laughs> okay, so the celebration should probably be something a little more realistic, like say, closing your eyes, having a sip of your morning coffee and saying, nice work, me. It might seem silly or frivolous, but a simple celebratory step is proven to help tiny habits stick. And if you get into a tiny habit of learning a little each day, rather than trying to cram it all in during an all-nighter, over time, you'll learn so much more. Speaking of avoiding the all-nighter, that leads me to the next tip. Number three, work smarter, not harder. If you're like most of my students, you may fall into the trap of spending hours cramming your brain full of Blender. But research shows that learning doesn't work this way. Instead, we really need to take in the smallest amount of new information possible and then immediately try to put that into practice without referring back to the source. By practicing retrieving or remembering these small bits of information that are already leaking out of our short-term memory, we actually begin building them into our long-term memory. While it's a bit too much to get into here, I've created an easy-to-follow method to breaking up your Blender learning sessions in a way to help you maximize your efficiency and memory retention. And I've put those together in a free set of notes for you that also recaps everything we're covering today. I've added a link to download them in the description. But wait, there's one more thing our brain needs to build these pathways to long-term memory. We need rest. That can be anything from taking restful breaks between learning sessions, allowing our minds to wander from what we've been focusing on, to naps, meditation, and even nightly sleep. As professor of neuroscience at the University of California, Berkeley, Matthew Walker points out in his book, Why We Sleep, perhaps the most important way to speed up your learning is getting the rest your brain needs to transfer knowledge to your long-term memory. So make sure to get your rest. Your future self will definitely thank you. All right, next, let's talk about one of the most important tips I can give you. Number four, practice deliberately with feedback. Coined by Anders Ericsson in his book, Peak, 
Deliberate practice is an efficient and effective method for gaining new skills. Rather than following a preset tutorial that doesn't match your own end goal, or experimenting aimlessly with Blender's tools to figure out what they do, here's how to practice deliberately. First, you need a clear goal. This should be building something that relates to the bigger goals in your learning map. Maybe something like, today I'll build a simple chair with a form or shape that's not too easy, but also not too hard. Something that's just above your current skill level. Next, you need 100% focus. While you practice, no checking email, going back to the tutorial video, or checking social media. And lastly, you need immediate feedback. Of course, you probably won't have an expert sitting next to you to provide the feedback while you practice. So for self-feedback, take notes every time you run into an issue or a question. Later, you can use these notes to seek out lessons or tutorials on the things that tripped you up. All right, now that you know about practicing deliberately with feedback, the last tip is number five, Take advantage of interleaving and spaced repetition. In their popular Learning to Learn course, Professor Barbara Oakley and Dr. Terence Sejnowski point out that practicing the same thing over and over again isn't the best method to learn something. Instead, our brains actually need to start forgetting information, then go back and retrieve it for it to really stick. Two powerful methods they share for doing this are interleaving and spaced repetition. Here's how they work with learning Blender. As you practice in Blender, don't just try and reinforce the same skills in every session. Say you set out to build a simple chair in your first session. In the next session, you might introduce a new concept, like figuring out how to adjust the camera. This is called interleaving new information. Then in a later session, go back and try the skills from the earlier challenge. This is called spaced repetition. When you're still learning new information, you might try a shorter time period or spacing before you practice it again. But as you become more familiar with the skills, you can space out your retrieval sessions much longer to get the best effect. Put this into practice to see how it can really help you retain your new Blender skills and build them into your long-term memory. All right, those are my five quick tips to help you learn Blender better. Tell us which one you found the most helpful in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe and let us know which Blender topics you want us to cover in our upcoming videos. From here, it's definitely possible to learn Blender on your own. But if you're serious about learning Blender and can't afford to waste time or pick up bad habits, we're building a comprehensive video course that incorporates all the lessons we've learned from teaching in person over the years. Head over to our website now to learn more. Or if you're not ready for a course just yet, make sure to at least check out this video that will help you get started learning Blender the right way. Until next time, happy blending.